It's 1 p.m. meeting being held via Zoom conference. Um, Eric, would you not lead? Would Eric, would you say the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, I'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Next order of business for public comment this time is designed for items that are not on the agenda for people to speak. Uh, does anybody want to appear? Just out of clarification, I would like to speak um, on the rainbow fiber build out. Is that? Wait till it comes up on the agenda, Abby. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman Bauer, just a question on that too. I noticed on the agenda that you have uh, 8.2 is when the commission is going to approve the Sparks funding, but then 8.3, uh, you have the Atchison Area Economic Development Corporation to uh, say a few words, which I think is also in regards to the fiber build out. So I don't know if that was misorder or whatever, but I have a comment on that section as well. As I'm anyway, sure. and Jonathan, you'll be able to speak. Uh, we'll have a conversation about the Sparks uh, funding, and you'll okay. be more than welcome to speak, okay? Thank you, sir. This is, uh, we want to hear everybody from everybody, so. Okay. Um, reading of the minutes, is anybody, has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Do I have a motion? I make a motion, Mr. Huh? I have a motion to adopt. I make a motion, Mr. Okay, I don't see Eric, so I'm going to second it. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing them, I see you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Passes two to zero. One uh, missing in action. Um, okay. Um, let me get my notes here together. Commissioner comments and committee reports. Do you have any, anybody have any comments? I have none. Okay, I just wanted to make a comment that I received an email today from Kinton Friend, our administrator at Senior Village, and uh, they received a five-star rating, the highest they've ever received uh, from Medicare.gov. Medicare I think it makes our community really stand out as having a five-star facility in our community. Um, she's going to leave on August 17th. She just got her MBA from um, UMKC, and she's going to start her own nonprofit to serve underprivileged and underserved people in uh, Chicago. And John Rainbolt, I, I believe he started already. Uh, I think it was set to start on the third. We've taken her place. He has lots of credentials, lots of ability. So we're looking for him to take right away what Kim Todd left off. Um, okay, new business before the board. Since um, canvas of the 2020 election, Michelle Phillips, you're up. I'm on. Okay. Michelle? Commissioner Bauer, I uh, I don't know whether Michelle is. I don't know whether Michelle is uh, planning to address you before, uh, right now or not. I typically give a an explanation to the board, kind of your charge, a, a reminder of the purpose of the canvas. Uh, so I could go ahead and do that before she's here, if that's okay. That's fine. Oh, she, well, there she is. We only do it every two to four years, so it's, it's easy to remember how we go about it. So. Right. Right. Uh, Michelle, is, is that okay for me to go ahead and give them that explanation, or do you want to say something first? No, it would be absolutely perfect. Yeah, or you can go ahead and. All right. The process of canvassing includes the counting of the ballots, the tabulation of votes, and certifying results. Uh, for local elections, there are two canvases. There is an original canvas that's done on election night by the election workers, and the final canvas is done by the county board of canvassers. 
For national and state elections, there are three canvases, the original on election night, the intermediate canvas, which is done by the County Board of Canvassers, and then the final canvas, which is done at a later date at the state level. Uh, the County Board of Canvassers is generally composed of members of the Board of County Commissioners, uh, except in the situation where there might be a conflict. We don't have any of those today. Uh, the, uh, the Board of County, or the County Board of Canvassers uh, conducts the final canvas, as I said, for the local elections and the intermediate canvas for the national and state uh, elections. In the local elections, the results will become official and final at the end of the canvassing process today. In the case of the intermediate canvas, the county election officer will send an abstract of the county election results to the Secretary of State's office, where the figures will be tabulated in preparation for the final canvas of national and state election results. KSA 25-2422 defines the crime of unauthorized voting disclosure, which is the intentional disclosure, disclosing or exposing the contents of any ballot or the name of any voter who cast such ballot. For this reason, photography at the canvas is not allowed. Although the intent of the canvas is to, uh, is, is to allow open and transparent uh, review of the process by the public. The use of cameras is prohibited because it may be distracting or intimidating, or more importantly, it could lead to disclosure of the contents of a voter's ballot uh, or the identity of a voter uh, who voted a provisional ballot. In every election, there are issues that arise on election day. Sometimes the issue can be cured at the voting place. For example, a party, uh, a voter left their photo ID out in their, their car. They can usually just go get it and bring it in and that cures it. Uh, sometimes a, uh, a voter in a primary election may receive the wrong ballot. That is a member of one party may receive the primary ballot for the other party. In this situation, the voter is to notify the election board uh, immediately and before casting the vote. If that ballot has been marked in any manner, the ballot is to be spoiled by marking a vote in each spot on the ballot. So voting for every candidate, voting for or against any propositions that might be on the, uh, on the ballot so that no one will know how the voter would have voted that incorrect ballot. Uh, the voter is then given the correct ballot, which is voted in the usual way. Uh, the important thing is the voter must notify the election workers prior to feeding the ballot into the machine and casting the vote. A vote cannot be uncast. And those issues should not come up before uh, the canvas. If there's a, an issue with that, it would need to be in a, uh, a challenge through district court. Sometimes during an election, a voter may be challenged. Uh, the challenge may occur for a variety of reasons, range, ranging from the person has never registered to vote to a simple name change due to a marriage. Uh, in each case, the voter is given a ballot and allowed to fill it out. Uh, the ballot is then placed inside an envelope and the envelope is sealed so that only the voter knows the contents of the, of the ballot. The election workers add information to the envelope and the voter executes an affirmation that is printed on the envelope. In some cases, the voter also fills out a new voter registration card so that the county election officer can cure the issue prior to the next election. That is, can change the address or change the, uh, the, the name of the voter so that at the next election, they don't have the same issue come up again. Sometimes an issue can be cured between the election and this canvas. For example, if a, for, if a voter forgot to sign a ballot envelope or forgot to bring in a photo ID to the polls, the person, uh, the voter may bring that, they may correct that by coming into the county election officer's 
office and signing the ballot or by bringing a photo ID uh, to be reviewed. Since election night, the county election officer has prepared tabulated results from the original canvas and has sorted all provisional ballots and challenged ballots in preparation for this canvas. Where appropriate, the county election officer has attempted to contact the voter to try to get the issue cured. Some issues may have already been cured. Uh, others will remain for you to decide. Earlier this, uh, well, I guess last week, I spent several hours with the county election officer and the deputy county election officer going over uh, the summary that she had prepared and or that they had prepared and assisted in making a recommendation for the board of the county board of canvassers the county board of canvassers has the duty to make the final decision as to which ballots are valid and should be counted and which ballots are invalid and should not be counted Provisional ballots are not opened unless and until this board determines to count the ballot. So provisional ballots that will not be counted will remain sealed and will never be opened absent a court order. So during this process, if you, the Canvas board, agree with the recommendation that is made, uh, just no vote is necessary, just, uh, you just have a brief discussion about it. You will vote at the end. If, however, you disagree with any of the recommendations that are made, then a, a motion should be made and the matter should be resolved by a vote. If you have questions or have a question for, uh, that requires a, uh, a legal opinion, uh, you may ask that. In some circumstances that I could answer that uh, in the open meeting and others, you could have a, uh, an executive session, but that has not ever been necessary since I've been a uh, county counselor. Your decision today is final. Uh, the results may not be changed except by a court order. After you have made your decision, the uh, county election officer will take all of the ballot envelopes into her office. The ballots, uh, the envelopes will be open, the ballots will be counted and fed into the, the machine. There are always at least two people present, one from each party when this goes on to ensure uh, fairness. That will take several minutes, so you'll take something else up on your agenda, I hope, during that time. After the votes have all been counted, the county election officer will update the abstract uh, she will then report back to you with a final abstract and you uh, canvassers will sign and certify the official abstract detailing the exact number of valid votes. Um, and with that said, I think uh, we're ready to present the, uh, the groups of ballots and explain why they are provisional and to have you make a determination as to whether they should be counted. And I will turn it over to Michelle for that. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, we had the election August 4th um, and I just have a little bit of a summary. We had 3,699 voters, which was a 31.66% turnout on the, on the election. Um, we had 57 board and poll workers, along with four staff members. We sent out 1,668 advanced ballots. Of those, we had 1,388 that were returned to us voted. We had 300 early voting that was completed in the office. Um, we have 107 ballots that were challenged or written as provisional, and I do have them categorized so I will just start with the first batch. Uh, we have 17 ballots that were from a registered voter that had moved within the county. 
All 17 have been given the correct ballot. The statute is um, KSA 25-2353, which is move of registrant. The recommendation is to count these ballots. Is there any questions on that? No. I have two ballots that the street file was incorrect. Um, the street file being the um, software system, our Elvis system, we have a file that determines what precincts they are on. Um, the system was incorrect, so we have the ability to correct that. So we have two of them. They did vote the correct ballot. The recommendation is to count these. Are there any questions? Recommendations. I have two ballots that the voters had a different name other than what was on the poll book due to marriage, divorce, or legal proceedings. Um, they both completed a new voter registration form um, for KSA 25 231 6. The recommendation is to count. All voters correct, voted the correct ballot. Any other recommendations, or do you want to go with the yes? Yes. I have 54 voters who registered in advance for a ballot. They did not receive their ballot by mail. They went to the polling locations and voted. We have not received any of these ballots back in the office. Um, for KSA 25-2908, subsection F, the recommendation is to count. Yes. I've got a question on that. Yes. Uh, they requested a ballot and they didn't receive the ballot and they voted at the polls. Well, I mean, they'll, wouldn't those, so they just didn't uh, vote normally with the machine. They had to do a provisional at the poll? Correct. Okay, that's where I thought they just went ahead and voted normally, okay. Right, we have them labeled as an advance. Um, we update the um, poll pad, so when they registered, the poll pad showed that they had advanced voted, um, even though the actual ballot had not received, been, been received by them. So okay. we only on ballot on record for them, so therefore the recommendation is to count those ballots. And, and Eric, I at the at the expense of being too long winded about the reason why there were ballots that were mailed out and they just were not delivered for two weeks by the post office. And um, you know, Michelle was receiving phone calls from voters saying, I, when's that gonna come in the mail? And we were saying they've already been mailed out. They've already been mailed out. And the reason then that those are provisional is because if the ballot comes back, if the person had not voted a provisional ballot, they could in effect have two votes at the election. So if uh, it's just a guard against it being counted both ways. So I wasn't thinking quick enough and I was thinking that if they had already voted and it was in the machine there wouldn't be anything here tangible to count or uncount and I didn't realize that they had been separated and and that's that's the origin of my question so that's exactly why she did it that way sure um, I have one one voter who was affiliated um, when they went through the process of voting um, they had to register or affiliate with another party. Um, this voter did not get their voter registration in signed. We were able to cure that. The voter registration is there. Um, so this unaffiliated voter has been affiliated. So therefore, um, per KSA 25-3301 subsection C, since the registration card has been filled out and is in with us, the recommendation is to count. Any questions on that one? No questions. I have four registered voters 
um, that returned their ballots. We received their ballots after our final count on Friday. Um, this year, with the extreme amount of bailout ballots, the Secretary of State has asked us to Wednesday, Friday, after we received our Friday, after we received the mail and did our final count, we received these four that were postmarked prior to the election or election day, but we received them Friday afternoon. So these basically should be counted since the deadline was met on both parts. So the recommendation to count is yes. I had one uh, registered voter who returned their advanced ballot application in an envelope. The envelope was not signed by that voter. Um, office staff reached out to that voter. We did cure this. We did have a signature on the envelope. So I have three different statutes that pertain to this. Um, but the recommendation is to count this since it is signed at this time. I have three ballots that were turned in. Um, location does not show ballot ID. Michelle, we can't hear you. Can you mute somebody that can help? Um, it's only the commissioners not muted. Um, all three of these voters did not show proper identification when they went to the polling locations. We have reached out to these and spoke to each of these three people. They have chosen not to bring their identification in. So the recommend recommendation per Kansas statute 25-2908 subsection D votes without proper identification. I agree. I have nine ballots that came in provisional. The voter was never registered in Ashland County. That's KSA 5-215 and KSA 5-2302 with the qualified voters, they, they need to be registered. So the recommendation is to not count these. Will be worked, they will be registered for the next election. You know, how many was that? There was nine there. Thank you. Sorry about that. There's a there's a noise and I can't figure out where it's coming from. I have one um, that was sent an advanced mail ballot. They didn't receive it in time. They went ahead and went to their polling locations and voted but then the application or the, or the ballot came back to us. So we have a duplicate. This is what we were talking about earlier, Eric. Mm -hmm. uh, for statute KSA 25-2908 subsection F, uh, not count because we do have the advance by mail in the office. Eight voters, when they went to the polling location, they were affiliated with a party. They chose at that time to vote a, a ballot that was of a different party. Um, per Kansas statute 25-3301, subsection C and statute 25-3304, recommended not to count. Are those people, um, when they request that, do they know that their vote just potentially won't count? Absolutely. Our board workers alert them, um, and that's why they had to vote this provisional ballot. Okay. Affiliated voters during the primary can affiliate at the polling locations, and they can vote the ballot that they affiliate with, but they have to be an unaffiliated voter in order to do that. Um, so someone, be it in any of the Republican, Democrat, or Libertarian Party, in order for them to vote a different party, they have to do that change prior to the first deadline. 
not met, then they can vote. We're not going to take that away from them, but they have to vote provisional. Are you finished, Michelle? One more bat. I have that came back after the deadline and they were postmarked after the election. So and for KSA 25-106 and 25-1132 is a recommendation not to count those. I agree. So out of the 107, we will count 80 as long as that's a recommendation to do. Chair would entertain a motion to accept the provisional ballots recommendation of the, the uh, clerk and election officer as presented. Um, also moved. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I send you ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Thank you very much. I'll go get busy and get the contract for you. Okay. Okay, moving right along. Uh, for all our Spark Board members in attendance, let's see, there's Becky, Andrew, Wes, Pat Henderson, myself. Am I missing somebody? There she is. She popped up in the middle. It's like a Brady Bunch here. Um, <laughs> Renee is here. So, Wes. After we had our meeting, at this, after we had the discussion at the workshop this morning, later it came up again in the late part of our workshop. There's some questions that the commission had. So I guess I would proceed by asking the commissioners to maybe ask the questions of the board. And um, so, the commissioners, do you have any questions? What was presented at the workshop? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Um, it came to light that in order to put the broadband everywhere, as recommended, that there was money taken away from the uh, business uh, loans or grants that were, there was a was 125,000 was removed from that. Wes, maybe you'd have to figure, uh, tell me the correct figures on that. 214,000 for the the project in the city of Atchison. And okay. 50,000 for Better Victor College. Yes. Okay, that was removed from those in order to uh, fund the broadband, real broadband. Um, what thoughts went into that? I mean, I, I thought this probably the number one goal was to get money in the hands of small businesses and things from the COVID spark money. And it seemed like maybe it would be in going directly to small business would be a better way of spending that. So what went into that process of removing that from the small businesses? So I would be happy to um, address that specific um, concern, Commissioner Knoll. Um, I'd also just like to say that I would have spoken up in the meeting, but I didn't think I was allowed to because you guys had passed that on your agenda and gone back to it and all the other committee members had come off. Um, so I think there was a little bit of communication and confusion on um, how this process worked. Um, but I would have been happy to have um, stepped in at that point and, and stated what I believe, which is that um, I really, I fundamentally disagree with the way that Commissioner Bauer has um, framed these funding decisions. Um, to say that a downtown fiber build out is taking away from downtown or from local business funding any more than any other expense within this $3.3 million um, doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I understand that there was working through a spreadsheet that popped this number in here and this number in there. But the whole point at the, uh, I mean, it was let's get our reimbursable expenses together for the cap, the that we're supposed to be reimbursed through these funds. And then let's talk about what's left over for other things. One of those things was discussions about a fiber, countywide fiber build out, which um, Justin and I both had conversations with Commissioner Bauer about. Um, when he took it to the county commission, he eliminated the um, downtown fiber build out. 
Um, again, it was during a county commission meeting when I didn't feel like I had any ability to say anything. Um, and it, it also, you know, we had had conversations about it. So that was very disheartening um, to Justin and I. However, you know, this was not um, a city proposal. This was a proposal that um, Wes and I got together with Rainbow and said, how can we have better internet connectivity throughout our county, um, which is the end goal. I don't know how often you guys speak with, you know, our local businesses or downtown businesses, but um, we, we have a strong uh, communication line with them, have a lot of conversations, provide a lot of programming for them, and an ongoing issue that we have heard from, you know, day one since I've been here is internet access is an issue countywide, including inside the city limits of Atchison, particularly in our downtown. Um, so I would say that, um, first off, just the, the framing this as it's an either or, either it goes to the city fighter, you know, the downtown fiber build out, or it goes to local businesses is really not, um, is not, it's not a fair framing of, of the situation. Um, and I, it also places every other expense above that, that downtown fiber build out. And I'm not really sure how that's the logic. Um, so that would be my, my first um, comment on that. Uh, on that, it, the, yeah, I think it's been tried to be framed as a city versus rural thing, but wouldn't most of the small businesses that received loans or grants be prominent, most predominantly in the city of Atchison. So wouldn't that, I mean, to frame it that it's gonna, we're taking away from the city to give to the rural, I, I don't, can't see that connection because uh, most of these businesses that would apply, I would imagine would be from the city of Atchison. So I would just like to be clear that I wasn't suggesting that we were taking away from the city by giving to the rural. I was suggesting that there isn't one pot of money that is more important than another pot of money and that taking away from one is, is taking, giving to one is taking away from another. You know, another concern that I, I really have is um, getting the funds out to the local businesses. Um, I don't know that there's been any assessment done of what the needs are of the local businesses. Um, I know that the county doesn't have, um, you know, a strong marketing administration um, arm. And um, I know that you guys haven't managed small business grants. Um, I am very worried that if this money does not get out to folks, that it's going to go back to the state. Um, it's not like anything's been pledged to any individual business at this point outside of a discussion of pledging um, some funding to Benedictine for the testing, which I fully support. Um, I, I do have a concern that the money is not going to um, be able to get spread um, just because of the lack of infrastructure, for better word, of, of getting that information out there and getting folks to apply. The original amount that was proposed for the small businesses, how was that arrived upon and uh, was that an estimate or? Yes, so there was never really an original amount. I don't know what you guys received. The committee didn't receive any sort of spreadsheet until yesterday at 445 or something like that. We did talk about the spreadsheet when it was on the screen for the sparse committee, but no one actually had a copy of it. So quite frankly, I did not have a clear picture of what we were even doing with funds until I actually got the spreadsheet and was able to dig through it. Um, the, I wouldn't say there was ever an original, the, the Sparks Committee has not been making decisions, right? We've been gathering up reimbursable expenses and the general discussion was, let's figure out what the cities, the county, the school districts have in expenses related to the COVID issue. And then whatever's left, we've got to figure out a way to get that money out in the community. And the discussion was business community, fiber build out, all of that. Um, but there was never an agreed upon number um, until, you know, I think it was when Jack made the, or suggested the motion of taking away from the down, the number, that was just a working draft spreadsheet, and then taking the money away from that specific um, direct business funding. Uh, uh, Commissioner Noel, I, I would second mm -hmm. that. Basically, in my opinion, anybody else in the committee, it's basically been, we're bringing in resources people are requesting to, to make it through, and the remainder has been sitting in this line item of the grant. So it was 2.9 million to start with. Then it went down to 1.9 million. Then it went to 1.6 million. And it, as, as uh, different entities have found things they needed money from, it has is, it is just gone down. So when the broadband in the city came up, to me it was just a natural that that would go down even further. There was never a set amount or target amount that we had set aside to say, this is what we wanted to do for the grants. Our hope was, uh, it would be a larger amount, but I can tell you this from my standpoint, uh, we don't have enough that we're requesting. 
simply because it ends December 31st. And I'm extremely concerned at the state of, of paying the personnel we need and having the supplies we need because we can only re request up to December 31st. Um, so that, that is my perception as being a part of the committee, how that's worked, that, that that grant was just what was remaining that hadn't been requested for. So it wasn't that we were taking something more away from it. The whole time that was going down, uh, the part about um, when, when Benedictine's testing came to us, we all agreed that was a county needed program. And that's why we opted to pay it instead of sending it through the grant process. And when we talked about trying to make that, that grant process look a little bigger, we said, well, they would still qualify for the $50,000 grant. So let's guarantee them the 135, and then they could apply for the 50,000 of the grant. It's, it's a really a wash of money, probably more transparency than what everybody wants to know, but that's how I function. So um, just this, that's my perception on it. I wanted to say that because I've got an interview I've got to get off of here for here in about five minutes. So, hey, I, I want to apologize because you know uh, this morning in the discussion I thought we had a good discussion, but then when more facts came to light, it raised more questions. So uh, there was no uh, intention to, you know, not discuss it already. So uh, thank you for your time. If you have to leave, Mr. Gaddis. Um, I would chime in on what Mr. Gaddis said as well. And I see, I'm, I'm a little, um, I got off of that meeting this morning because I thought the discussion of the grant was over. And so now to hear all of this come up, that's just kind of amazing to me because I, I would have offered more light to that discussion this morning for sure. But when we're talking about broadband, it truly is a county issue and it truly does impact small businesses across the county. So I don't think it's excluding the city of Atchison or including or excluding parts of the county. If you really want to make an impact on businesses throughout the county, you have to look at the broadband perspective as at the through the county as a whole because COVID is a direct impact on broadband. Look at the amount of broadband that became necessary as a result of COVID. We want to retain businesses that are struggling because of COVID. Broadband will help that. And in addition, it might even attract businesses who are having to locate because of COVID, relocate into our area. So I think when you look at the broadband perspective, it would be almost impossible to say we have to exclude the city of Atchison and that. It's a countywide issue. Okay, I want to say one more. Eric, go ahead. Just say. Uh, I, again, I don't think it was, um, to me, it's not taken away from the city because I think most of the people that would apply for the small business part of it would be small businesses are predominantly in the city of Atchison. My worry is that with the mandatory closure of a lot of businesses, small businesses, and they are struggling. Do they need funding now, uh, loans now, uh, but before the first of the year? Because that's when the second phase, I believe, will come into effect is what, after the first of the year. Uh, and when also that it came to light that this broadband could be funded through the second phase, to me, I didn't know if that was a priority to do the broadband now, and if a small business wanted to apply and there wasn't enough money in the first phase, they would have to wait for funding. When would that be? Six months, four months uh, before they'd be uh, eligible to apply. Eric, I'd like to speak to process a moment. Sure. I think we had about a month in this committee to come up with these proposals. Uh, one thing I did learn. If you're going to give three and a half million dollars away, there's a pretty good line of people wanting to use it. And you know, um, everybody who was on the committee attended. I think they either the people who missed uh, a meeting, but it was it, it's on top of their regular jobs. And uh, most people attended a series of um, Zoom meetings, the Department of Commerce, the Sparks Initiative in uh, Topeka hours and hours of trying to learn all we could. And I think we probably could have used another three weeks of robust discussion, 
but we were put up against certain barriers, like we have a deadline that has to be spent by December 30th, and we have to audit it. There's a lot of different things discussed. Um, the committee yesterday decided they felt like the, re the uh, broadband was uh, a necessary expense. In the, in the scheme of things, $214,000, is that what it is? Is only about five or six, six percent of the total. It's a pretty small amount. I think the broadband being spent is around 22% of the total. So we're spending a lot of this money on broadband. Today, the Department of Commerce and the governor's office announced in phase two, there was gonna be $60 million for broadband in phase two. And I will tell you right now that that's not enough. It won't be enough. Um, especially in, there's so many places underserved. But the committee came up with this thing. The way it came about might not have been perfect, but it certainly did come up with a recommendation. And uh, you asked me this morning if I changed my mind, and I said, not really. I just, I, I was robust about discussing the idea that we were giving money to somebody in the city that maybe didn't need it as bad as other people do. And I guess I, hearing some of the comments from, uh, from uh, industry and businesses, um, I'm still on the fence. I, I would like to say that we passed the ordinance as it was, was presented this morning. Um, Bill, do you have any comments? Yeah, well, this is Jonathan. Just, uh, no, 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 Jonathan. This is a conversation between the committee. Oh, I'm and, sorry. Uh, and okay. committee and commission. Then you can speak, okay? All right, yeah, let me know when I can. Okay. <laughs> Bill, did you have anything? No, I'll yield the floor to Mr. Mize. Okay, well, that, I'm not yielding the floor to Mr. Mize. I'm, I'm running the meeting, okay. so. Do you have anything to say? No. And the chair would entertain a motion to adopt the CARES Committee recommendation. Okay. Also move. What? Also move. Okay, is there a second? I'm going to second it for discussion purposes. So move and second it. Is there any more discussion? Seeing them, I assume you're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes to all opposed, same sign. No. Okay, it passes two to one. Okay. Now, Jonathan, you can talk. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Chairman Bauer I, and, and Commissioner Paul and Noel. Uh, I, I guess you've already voted, so I, I don't know if, if, if my comments mean anything. Um, but yesterday I did participate in the committee, a Sparks committee as an uh, interested party and wanted to get a better understanding of the funding available and requested that and was denied that uh, because I'm not on the committee, which I understand, but I am a taxpayer. I am a business owner. Uh, I'd like to know where all that money's going, wanting to make sure that all the money was uh, dispersed fair and equitable to all the other entities uh, out there. Again, some are going to get more than others. I get it. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to make sure that we were uh, looking at that. And then um, just also the concern of what the methodology is going to be from the county's point of view to handle all the business grants and nonprofit grants being come in, uh, coming in uh, and, and that they're evaluated fairly. So that was my, my question, my participation in it yesterday. And then also um, just to reiterate as a business owner, um, you know, representing a, a medium-sized business here in the county, that uh, we do need uh, high-powered fiber uh, internet within the entire county, and uh, not just broadband. Even though we have that in areas or other other areas, um, you know, and other funding is going to come from that. That's great, but uh, business owners and residents here in the community need to have uh, better than adequate uh, service. I mean, with all this schools and everything else being applied upon us. We need to have better uh, service. So 
that that's only my comments and I support, I'd like to see more funding for them. So, but I guess you've already voted. So uh, that's my comment. Jonathan, we went through a definite process. The governor gave us the process of determining an administrator whose cares sparks is one. So we try to do the best job we can do and we'll continue to do it based upon uh, the applications that come in on a grant basis. We are looking for uh, people to be on that committee. We'd be more than happy to uh, solicit volunteers from this group that's here. Uh, we haven't actually got the committee together, so we do have what we're looking for and how to grade and how to execute this particular program. I, I, could I just say one more thing as a committee member? Um, I was happy to serve on the committee. I think it was incredibly important to make sure that these funds go um, to the right places and that it is allocated well. I, I have personal um, consternation about this process, particularly because it didn't feel very engaged with the public. Um, I don't know that anyone has seen, I mean, I started all of these text messages after you guys voted, like what did they just vote on? What's being adopted? Um, I don't know that the public or anyone else has any idea what's in that document. Um, I know, I mean, I understand we had discussions on the SPARC committee, but you know, it was from a spreadsheet that nobody had in front of them. Um, I, I have real concerns that um, it, it wasn't as transparent as it should have been, um, but you know, it, it wasn't our process to, um, to carry out um, and I understand that the time frame was really limited and it was difficult, um, but this is, I guess this is when I feel like it's just really important to be very communicative with the public and I don't feel like this was a, a public process at all. Uh, Commissioner Bauer or Chairman Bauer, may I, may I chime in? Sure. Um, Voice of reason, always. Well, for, for Jonathan and I, this, this also goes a little bit with what, what Becky had to say. Uh, I, I apologize. Yesterday, I did not uh, understand that you were requesting something and it was not being provided because that should have been done. And I guess I, it just didn't track with me at the time. And I know I was a little late to the meeting because I had, uh, an, I had another meeting before that, but um, it, it should be, it should all be public and, uh, uh, should have been so I just wanted to, to throw that out there. I apologize for that and we um, I guess my commitment will be if moving forward that I'll uh, do my best to give advice to the committee that uh, things that are public records are actually public. So. Yeah, Pat, this is Jonathan. Again, it wasn't, I, I just asked Wes because he kind of ran the meeting and just asking for the document. Understand his point of view is you can't share it until uh, the commission approved it. And, which, you know, as a, as a taxpayer, as a business owner, I don't agree with, but I took it as that. And, and I still don't know what's in that document. I don't know what, how it was derived or who's getting what. It's well-deserved, I'm sure, but uh, we'll, we'll just let it go. And I guess everybody will get their funding that they get and uh, we'll see who else applies and go from there. So thank you. It was a very difficult vote because uh, the members of the committee You've had weeks and weeks of meetings to arrive at your decision. Uh, I know me, I'm sure Commissioner Pohl was the same way, really didn't get much information until yesterday or this morning. So we've had to uh, basically do it on the fly. Uh, so all the meetings were posted on the county website when they were with the Zoom links. So the public could have attended. Um, we also <clears throat> shared that on social media that we were having the meeting and the link in there. Um, I had multiple, multiple people contact me, asking me where the meetings were and how they were. And I emailed out those, those links. Becky also emailed out links to people. Um, so the opportunity was there where people could have attended. Um, this document will be on the county website for anyone to download and view. Uh, we've never hidden that, and yes, Jonathan contacted me yesterday and wanted to know what was in the spreadsheet, and I thought that'd be approved before it was released. So if I spoke wrongly, um, that I could have sent that to you prior to the commission 
adopted you. I apologize. As far as due diligence goes, though, I do wish that people would have had even the opportunity here to speak before the vote. So maybe next time that's something to be considered, please. Were you gonna, were you gonna speak against it, Abby? I'm sorry? Were you gonna speak against the, the uh, No, the I, was, I was speaking for the fiber build out. Okay, so it did pass, right? Correct. However, you didn't give lay folks as myself the opportunity. So I think in the future that would be prudent. And, and again, we're talking about what did you say it was like 5% of the total funding. So no one had any ability to weigh in on, I mean, outside of if they knew about a sparks committee meeting and sat through it, you know, there wasn't an opportunity for folks to weigh in. So I would invite you Becky to send a review of the county commissioner's process and uh, how you would improve it and how you would uh, change it. Change it. That'd be something we look forward to. I'd be happy to do that if it's taken in good faith and just a, you know, a desire to get people aware yeah. of what's going on and being transparent in government. Right. I, this is Mark Windsor and I, I just a few comments and you know, I'm, I'm representing AADC and Exchange Bank and I heard a common theme among all of you understanding and knowing how important broadband and fiber is to our community. And I, I hope that this isn't the, the end of the conversation and the discussion because it will continue to move forward. And, and you know, we might get some funding to critical businesses, but having broadband might make them a lot more effective in their in their profitability and their reach to their customers. So, you know, it sounds to me like this is voted on and done, but I hope that we continue to look for opportunities because this is an extremely important area. Fortunately, the bank has resources available for, for larger fiber, but we are increasing that all the time. We get kicked off of Zoom meetings because the pipe isn't large enough. So just keep an open mind as, as we move forward that this is a very, very needed part of our infrastructure. Mr. Windsor, uh, the, fi the fiber optic passed. Well, but not, did it pass at the level that, that we were hoping it was going to pass at, include the the city build out? Yes. Yes. I guess so I was. Passed, so, so we passed the, the discussion from this morning, which was the way the committee presented it. Okay. Well, I think to Mr. Windsor's point, we don't know the amount of what was passed, but, uh, you know, I guess I'll find that out. That was the only thing. Yes, I'm glad to see it is, but we need more and what that amount is. I don't know, or we don't know, um, but I'm glad it did pass, but it, it, you know, should have had some more comment and transparency is. Uh, uh, Les, could you go to the numbers for Jonathan? Well, I just like to see a spreadsheet. I'll look on the website and give it to me. That's fine. I, I'll go there. But you put the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet upon the floor? Uh, yeah, I'm going to load on the website here shortly. You, you don't have to do that. I mean, I can, I'll, I'll just be able put to. Just put it on the. Zoom screen so everybody can see it. Um, one second, I gotta get it. I'm sorry, let's I didn't even put you on the spot. It's okay, I just had it open on my other computer and not on my tablet. I'm almost there. Okay. 
So of the 3.2 million, 631,910 went to reimburse from cities, counties, um, and school districts. 44,000 was total planned independent. Um, 729,000 was uh, the small grant. 730,000 was the broadband countywide. Health department generator of 9504. Um, EOC expansions was 13543. City of Action 83,047. Direct. Wes, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Transfers to the health department um, to purchase testing supplies, the testing machine, vaccine coolers, refrigerator, freezer, 145,000, and then BC of the 135. Oh, and then the extension council, extension office of $1,300. There. You can see it all now on your spreadsheet. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. And and again, this is Jonathan. I it you know I just it is what it is now. Um, but making sure that all the, you know, all the details that make up that some of it seems I again not knowing and not that any school district is better than another. They've all been affected. But you know, one why is one, you know, twice as much as the others. And 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 it's fine. It's just. You know, uh, just I, you know, I was trying to make it more fair and equitable, but again, it's you can't do that all the time. I understand. So anyway, I, it's it's all gone now. So thank you. That was well, actually, comes up again, Jonathan. You get a chance to serve on the committee. Okay. Thank thank you for your time and and uh, service. I have a two o'clock yeah, for another meeting at this. So I I appreciate I yeah. appreciate the time and effort of everyone. Yep, it's not easy. Thank you all. See ya. Okay. You take out the, the document, Russ? Yes, I can. Jack, I was on Wes and all, everybody. I just really appreciate you guys listening and, and taking into consideration the testing and the self monitoring application from the college. Um, we've been testing students um, as they're coming back to campus on a monitor. We tested about 300 on Saturday night and we just got the results back and and there was seven seven students and six or eight now eight students and six of the eight were living off campus in in town so um, so they were able to return home and um, and were quarantining the other students so we just you know I just got done um, testing some more students and I'll have to test another 300 tonight the student leaders are coming in this afternoon and then this weekend we'll have all of our freshmen returning students it's all a staggered move in so I just really appreciate it also in there was a self-monitoring app that students can use in particular the athletes and so um, it's just I think we did this for the community truthfully so we really wanted to re um, make this or help the community understand we'll do everything we can to keep the community safe and we thought with bringing 2,000 students back this might make the community feel more comfortable and it, and it helps the college as well kind of as a baseline um, we gave our students uh, an opportunity to opt out if they um, took a negative test recently or were very very uh, upset about the test or anything so and they're really excited and appreciative to be able to take the test so it's a slide of tests that get the results back 25 or 24 to 48 hours and the company in Lenexa comes up and gets the tests and and it's been a real smooth process so we just started testing but I just wanted to thank you we really really appreciate it so thank you Linda we've had quite a few meetings between health department and BC and BC is really going above and beyond to make sure that our community stays safe so, Similar with Baker University. She's not embellishing as much as she should be. BC is no, no I, I, and thank you, Wes. You guys have been great. So, yeah, thank you all, especially anybody to do with the schools or colleges. I mean, we know what a huge burden it has to be to uh, make these decisions you're making. So, yeah. Well, you just want to stay open for the community and for us, and and we want to provide you know a sense of community and faith and scholarship to our students. So, it's a fine line you have to you know 
follow, but um, the students are really excited to be back and, and into the community and they love Atchison, they love the college. So I think they'll bring a lot of life back into the community as well. So, so thank you. I, 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 we're getting COVID, Linda. Keep them up there. Yeah, come awesome. visit us. I know, I know. Well, President Minnis wanted to be on this morning, but um, he had a Zoom meeting for the community meeting. And then this afternoon he went to a funeral with one of our students' parents. And so he wanted me to thank you as well. So yeah, I've had several conversations with him. Okay, I better run. I've got another Zoom meeting at two as well. So, but thank you so much. And thank you for all your service. I know the amount of time and energy just being married to Jerry for so many years. It takes a lot of time and energy and I, I really appreciate what you do. I forgot thank you. Uh, okay. in Congress, so, okay. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the Atchison Sports Activities and Business Inc. Uh, maintenance request, uh, their quarterly request for $10,000 and for Atchison facility of 2,500 for the uh, facility in uh, Evanham. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the expenditure. I may also move. It's been moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor by saying aye. 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 Um, I, Wes, do you want to go over, there's two proclamations here. Uh, do you want to go over those? So, so the first document um, was the declaration of disaster because with the recent rain slash flood events that we've had, um, the county and city together have incurred $434,000 worth of damage due to those storms. So I had a declaration effective August 4th um, because of those storms. Today I need to sign the secondary document, the extension. Um, so I need to have the commission vote to have all three sign the extension of the declaration. And what that does, um, we had to meet a threshold of sixty-eight thousand to require or to request FEMA assistance. Uh, declaration is not possible. We are well above the sixty-eight thousand um, dollars. So. doing that <laughs> as long as the state hits the threshold of 3.4 million after we do our declaration FEMA should come in the county and the city assistance um, four hundred and thirty thousand dollars in damages okay. I hear sure. a lot do I have to do these one at a time? Because there's not really numbers on them, Russ. So, the one that just has your signature and my signature, you have the authority to do that and you've already done so. The other uh, one needs to be voted on. Okay, so um, shall we entertain a motion to, to the proclamation extending a state of local disaster emergency for Ashton County uh, on the ongoing flood that occurred on July 20th, 20. This is the, this is as of August fourth, two thousand twenty. Well, I have a motion. Also move. Okay. I'll second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, I got so many pieces of paper on my desk this morning. Is have I missed anything under new business? Uh, what was that? Eight point three area. Economic Development Corp members. That was the people that came here to talk to for the um, came here to talk for the uh, broad approval. Okay, well I thought yeah, that was uh, under eight point two. Yeah, well, we approved that they wanted to speak to the commission. Michelle evidently put it on here after eight point two, which would not be. Wouldn't do any good to talk after this. They still okay. want to talk to you, though we passed it. So. Well, I wasn't uh, for sure what okay. that was designating, so I was want to make sure we didn't miss something. Mm -hmm. Chairman Bauer, may I interject real quick? Can I get yes. clarification? 
that the motions passed for the 377 and 409 for the ASAF and the extending of the disaster declaration, just because you never said passes three to zero, and I know I only heard two eyes. Okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Both of them pass three to zero. Okay, thank you. Any, uh, are we missing anything, Wes? This is not even there. So, old and unfinished business. Do we have any old and unfinished business? Any councilor update? Uh, things are progressing with the tax sale. Um, I have uh, shared a uh, list of people that we're looking for, if you will. Um, and so hopefully we'll get some responses back from that and try to get everyone served. Uh, so that's where we are in the process. How many have been redeemed already? Redeemed, not very many. Uh, there have been several that ha that uh, but after we filed, usually the court issues an order uh, at that time regarding redemption, but because of COVID, uh, and it, it made sense to do it, I'm not criticizing it, but because of COVID, uh, we did not do that this time, or the court did not want to do that until, uh, I guess, until things were kind of back to normal a little bit. And so there were people that, there were several that made payments um, and properties were removed. Um, I'm getting the back. There, there have been 36, 35 properties that is, uh, uh, some were removed because of an agreement that was made with the uh, county treasurer. Uh, one was removed because when I got the call to talk about it, I determined we had made an error and should not have been included. Uh, there were 15 properties that were dismissed because the taxes were paid in full and two that have been redeemed. That is the property, the taxes were paid in full and the court costs uh, were paid to the court. And so that leaves Seventy-seven properties that are still uh, still on the the, the sale. Seventy-eight properties, excuse me. I can't tell whether I counted that one or not. Seventy-seven or seventy-eight. Yeah. So you let us know the timing as soon as you know the when we can have a sale. Yes, if. if if any of you want that list of the people we're looking for, I could sure email it to you. It's probably no. a good idea. I just hadn't done it. So I got I got too much detail on my plate. You have a commissioner. Okay. I'll look at it. All right. Thank you. Um, anything else? No. No executive uh, session. I have a motion to adjourn at 209. Oh, no, no. Can I, can I interject? No, please. Oh, We're still waiting on the canvas. No, I'm sorry. You're, you're, you're not forgotten. You're just out of sight. You're so, muted. <laughs> she's not in here yet. She hasn't came back in from running all those 80 ballots, I believe is what it was. 
So she's not back in here, but we can't adjourn until we're done with that. Sorry. Okay. So you want to do, uh, you want to sing us some song or something? Or? No, thank you. <laughs> Eric, you want to sing a song? Shadow puppets or whatever they call them with the, the hands or the... Uh, yeah. No, I'm not serenading I anybody. I, I didn't realize we were that bad a government till today. No comment. I give him my comment. It was a big old no. What? I said, I give him my comment. It was a big old no. That should have been put off to the next go around of money. What the hell good is those business going to do with the high speed internet? If they're struggling financially now, they should have had the finances to keep going. Now the broadband could have come in in second phase. Common sense tells you that. We could recess for a time. Would we have any idea of how long? If you, I, no, I don't know how long, but if you recess, then you have to wait that time. You can't. Right. I, I okay. wouldn't anticipate it being more than five minutes or so, but. Okay. Well, let's, let's discuss a couple of topics. Then. I mean, do we feel like we're giving uh, Justin all the uh, resources he needs out of Road and Bridge, or is there things that we, we opening up for him? I, I don't think it's it's not easy to hire people. Everybody I talk to, they can't hire people. I don't know what it's like in the agriculture community. I think that we could double that budget and spend it all. Uh, it's there's that big a need on these not just uh paved roads but the rock roads well i, I get out there and drive a lot of the roads and i'm amazed at how good some of them are but they're always all of a sudden there's that big pot on them or, or a series of problems uh, you can see that they're out there patching as much as they can it's just a patch. I think on that vein that I think that some of these rock roads are going to have to become more of a priority and not just chip and seal or paved roads. Um, we've been concentrating, well, that was been the greatest need, but um, there are rock roads out here that right now we get by, but in the winter time, the last couple of winters, they've been really bad. And when everyone's concentrating on the chip and seal and paved all summer, there's no improvement being done on them and then during the winter when they're bad you can't work on them then either so eric we, we did a priority of it and follow the priority pretty well i'm not up on i can't answer that question but maybe you can or your knowledge um the priority roads i think we've done a good job prioritizing the paved roads that need to be worked but so we're not prioritizing any rock roads um, there was, and that was still when Jay Harbor was here, he had asked us, I think at the end of our planning session, uh, about taking off like number five priority and replacing it with, he had a map with certain rock roads that needed to be rocked. And I believe we approved it. Um, but that's 
a drop in the bucket for what's needed. I mean, it's not just in my area, it's all over. So um, I think next year, if we do that same prioritizing, we need to uh, maybe take another look at those roads also. When will we start to um, put together proposal on 286 for bonding or or that? I think they're working on uh, trying to get that with a grant. The last I heard, Aaron. Yeah, I didn't know when that. If they'll hear from the grant before, we would need to. I think it's moving at the speed of sludge, you know, dealing with the state government. So. I guess the Big Ten canceled their football season. I'm sure they're going to cancel the football seasons everywhere.
So guys, how are the crops looking out there? Oh, they're looking good. Yeah, they're looking good. Really the price will probably, probably be down, but the crops are going to be good. Crops are pretty much made. Did you see the pictures of Iowa up there on the huge windstorm that happened yesterday? I heard on the radio. I didn't see the pictures. Black. Corn. Black. Black. 100 mile an hour wind, straight line winds. Yeah. I don't know whether that will, if it's not snapped off, whether that can be any of it redeemed or not, but it's going to be a long harvest for those guys, if there is one. I'm sure they've already called their insurance agent. Our crops look fantastic. So, uh, but well, I don't remember seeing beans that tall in there. They're so they were tall. really good last year. Um, I didn't think we'd ever see the like again. We may equal them last year, but we're far from harvest, though. So. You know, if you ever went to Guatemala with me, Eric, and you saw them plant beans or corn, they get those real deep furrows like I used to be in the 20s. And Mm -hmm. A foot apart, uh, you know, but when they, when they harvest the corn and they plant the beans next to the corn stalks, the beans climb up the beans stalks. So they use it to, uh, of course, they mostly grow black beans. That's what they eat. Their production per acre is pretty small. Yeah, that's pretty primitive. No. Well, they're not sticking a fish in the hole, like the pilgrims. You guys missed a real good rip roaring time and lecture night down there at the courthouse with all the excitement with the shooting. What exactly happened, Eric? I didn't really hear the whole story. Uh, I was there. I happened to be looking out the north doors, waiting on the first boats to arrive, and I seen a young gentleman running west, and one of the ladies from the uh, appraisers that was in the appraiser's office came over, and she asked me if I had seen him, and I go, yeah. She said, well, we heard fireworks back here, and we saw some kids run different directions. They were afraid that they ran into the courthouse, and I said, no, I was right here, and no one ran in. And uh, just within a minute or so, the Atchison police were everywhere. I mean, they, they were on scene immediately. So I don't know who called it in or what, but it was an actual shot. And uh, the young man ran past the north of the courthouse and went into the sheriff's uh, office. So I guess for protection, well, he was shot, you know, and he knew 
<laughs> he better be seeking shelter. And so you try to run to the you try to save yourself, go to the police department, right? Yes. Uh, uh, things worked out the best in a way because if he would have ran into the courthouse election night, that could have really been havoc if they would have had to evacuate or, you know, the the courthouse. So uh, I'm glad he went where he did and, and not into the courthouse. So was there a crowd at the courthouse for the election? I didn't hear you. Was there a crowd there for the election? Not a crowd, just the essential workers. And, and uh, I had asked whether I should be there or not. And I guess the uh, people want the help to get the equipment in. So I not only brought the equipment into the courthouse, I sanitized it before any of the uh, people in the courthouse had access to it. So I had uh, spray bottles and rags and wiped it down and, and uh, to kind of give a buffer between the poll workers and the uh, courthouse workers that would get it. Did anybody ever hear if Tom and Joe was cleaning the courthouse like we asked them to do? Or did that just go over their heads? Well, I was in the courthouse uh, last week one day and it looked like they're keeping the place pretty safe to me. Though. But like I said, I don't know, maybe they didn't wipe down the stairway or something. The place looked pretty clean. You know. I'm not there as much as uh, some other employees, um, but I, I do frequently when I go, try to go early in the morning and, uh, uh, you know, Tom's there working at 6.30 in the morning, um, already at work. And I see them, uh, I see him at least a couple times. I've seen him during the day, kind of going through and doing a quick wipe down of stuff, so. I don't know exactly what you had mandated for to be done, but they, uh, Tom is a he, he, pretty conscientious worker and uh, is, is always working. How long has he been with the county? Because they've been in there a long time. Tom, you say? I, I don't have any idea how long he's been there. Yeah, longer than I've been around. Jack, are you going to go up to the nursing home in the last day of Kenton and present her with something, a certificate, or anything? We need to figure out. Been there long enough. I'll talk to Jamie about that because the last person they wanted at that nursing home is me or anybody else. So maybe we could do something outside. Or, well, that she hasn't been here all that long either. Well, but uh, she uh, at least she's getting the awards. I mean, so you got to assume she's done a really good job. That's kind of my. It was amazing how many write-in ballots or real-in ballots there were. 
1500 I think I think she said it was part of 600 last time. You know, somebody's been doing a great job behind the scenes. We don't hear much from him. It's Mark Wilson. I think you're right. I have the final abstract from Michelle, so she must be done. Yeah, see what how much longer it's going to be. Well, I haven't. She just mailed emailed it. So, um, I don't know what that course. horse hasn't gotten here yet either. What? I said that horse hasn't gotten here yet either. You know, Eric, you need to start using the county's website address. I think that's what's slowing it down. I, I think it's the speed of the... It wouldn't have anything to do with my... my address. It's the speed. Oh, Michelle. Hi. Um, Hi. We're officially done. Um, I have emailed all three commissioners and Patrick the um, final abstract for approval. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point? I don't. I can't see it, so it hasn't come through. Okay. So what, um, obviously we've got a vote to approve, but what about signatures, Michelle? Is our, can I send you the signature via email or does it have to be a original signatures? Um, there's going to be two different places to sign um, at the end of the very last of the report, and then there's separate sections. One's the Democrat, which is the, at, in the beginning. So on page eight, there's going to be a signature line, and then at the very end, there's a signature line. Well, I can sign it from here, but what if you want? I didn't need all those signatures to be able to. To the Secretary of State, right? He's asking if you want original signatures. Um, at this point, I just need signatures. So if you can send them to me, Jack, that will be good. I just need to archive these so they'll be archived in our archive book. Okay. I can come in. Uh, I have to be in Atchison for a bank meeting so I could come in and sign. Okay. There's other documents I believe that we need to sign from today's meeting also. So if <laughs> then we approve a couple items that need signatures. We did. And, and I think I've sent all those signatures to everybody.
Okay, you got it yet, Eric? No. Did you ever get quarries? I got quarries, but uh, that came in. A long time after, so. Do we, can you display the results down there so I can see them? Bill, do you have them? No. Can I do Did screen share? What's that? I, I asked if I could do screen share. Sure. But I, I don't know how. But down at the very bottom, it says screen share, share screen. It's a oh. green arrow. There. I think I get us on mute. Okay, there's the Democrats for the first page. Democrats, page two. This is almost all write-ins. Uh, page three, again, Democrat, mostly write-ins. The uh, County Commission, third district, Dwayne Boldridge, 358 votes with no opposition. County clerk, um, I don't think there was a candidate on the ballot, so those are all write-ins. Um, so, including one for Eric Knoll, congratulations. <laughs> Sorry, Michelle. Yeah, they have to love it, actually. Ca County attorney also on the Democrat ballot, there wasn't a name, so those are all write-ins. Uh, same with County Treasurer, all write-ins. Uh, Register of Deeds, same. Uh, Sheriff John Calhoun was the only candidate, 764 votes. Keys, uh, precinct committee, uh, committee man and committee woman, maybe committee woman's on the next page, on the next page. And then the townships. And then this would be the page that you would sign. Uh, the, on the Republican side, the United States Senate, Grace first, the statewide or the state races I, I mean after that um have you had enough time to look at that eric yeah i'm following pretty good okay uh county commission races county clerk county attorney county treasurer Okay. Register of deeds and sheriff race, which was a contested race. Uh, precinct committee people. Of course, the votes are like that because the advanced votes are all in one column and the others, they're, it's by precinct and that's why they're only in one precinct. Uh, Write-ins. <laughs> Committee woman and write-ins, township trustees and write-ins, more write-ins, more write-ins, and signature page. There's two signature pages, correct? Yes, page two and page, excuse me, page eight, I think it was, and page last, which I, I can't remember what number it is. 10. I don't think it was eight, I believe. So the chair would, the motion needs to be to finalize the canvas. Oh, it is 10. My, mine says 18 pages. Um, there's two different sections. Um, the Democrat section was eight pages long, which is in front of the Republican part, which is 10 pages long. Um, oh. I think started out about three or four pages and with all the write-ins we added additional pages. 
because of that. The number restarts, so it's page eight and page 10. Gotcha. So I need to call for a motion, but what is the wording of that? To accept the uh, county election officers final abstract and approve it uh, for submission, I think. The chair would entertain a motion to accept the uh, election officers final abstract and submission of the 2020 primary vote matches in county. Do I have a motion? Sorry. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Shall we anything else? Um, no, I have nothing else. And I know that doing this election is a lot of work. And the good news is you get to do it again. And do it again. Right away, too. We have everybody. Ones that are due out in um, the middle of September. So we've got to turn this right around. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Any thoughts on the, the mail-in ballots that didn't get to their destin, uh, destination? Uh, um, we're going to be taking some preventative measures. We are going to hand carry to the tellers anything under a full flat box. Um, anything with a full flat will go to the dock or to the deck and have a, an, a postal worker come out and meet us. Um, we've got a large amount of advanced ballot applications already in, which will be worked. So therefore, they will be out sooner. Um, the sooner we can get them out, I believe, is like the 15th of October. So we, we look to have the majority of them out at that point. We don't look to have the stragglers like we did this year. We had a lot of uh, applications come throughout that two-week period that we had the advanced voting. So we did a lot of matches. I'm hoping that the majority of what we have is in and we won't have a lot come later. Um, I think uh, something important is that if they don't, that the electors know that if they don't receive the ballot that they have the right to go to the poll to vote. So right. I think that's something important to get out to them. Correct. Yeah, I was, okay. Um, I did ask uh, Laurie Forge, how do they count the six cases of Benedictine? And she said, I think there's more than six. I'm looking into it. <laughs> so uh, I'd call that. I don't know if they count for Atchison or they count for where they came from. I just try to understand that. So. <laughs> uh, they probably won't be public with well, all that I guess they are now but I mean they won't be counted until Friday correct when I haven't the doesn't the health department send all that information out just on Fridays now I'm not sure I think Wes is the one who usually sends it out I thought he sent it out when they just came there there he is that's one thing about zoom you know what I wasn't is? exactly listening I just heard my name so what was what were you saying well I had asked Lori how many if how the Benedictine uh, COVID cases that Linda mentioned today, six, were counted. And came back and said, well, it might be more than six. But uh, they didn't know they're counted for Ashton County or where they came from. Or... So they have a total of eight now. Um, they will go on our list because they are residents here now. Um, so that information is given to Lori. Um, the people that <clears throat> are the students that can go home to quarantine, so not here, but if you not hear anyone. I don't know why it's doing that today. So if the students can go home to quarantine, we are doing so, and Lori is still um, checking on them daily, like the health department does for all the cases. Um, if they have to quarantine here, there is a quarantine. Um, BC has chosen a place to quarantine the students. Um, they will provide them all their meals and they won't leave the room that they're going to be quarantined in. But so that will count on our counts. Um, but we did come out now, so she's still doing her investigations. Okay. So I, don't, I didn't mean to get ahead of you, Wes. I just wanted to understand. So yep. uh, hopefully, uh, on the release, hopefully, that won't be a big outbreak. So, 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Wes. Yes. Wes. Is uh, sore butt a symptom of COVID-19? Or is that just getting your ass kicked during an election? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's my symptom. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't say I'm I got sorry. COVID-19. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you. Wes, is there any reason when, let's say, look, Michelle emailed us all the abstract for the uh, <laughs> Eric didn't receive his instantaneously. Have you still re have you received it now, Eric? Does it uh, I just just shut it off, but no, it hadn't been there. But I've been in contact with Corey. Uh, he said his internet's been acting up. Wes was going to send me something over the noon hour. I still haven't seen it at all. Um, so I don't know. It's I think it's more system wide. It's not just me. I, I think. Um, I think you might be having internet issues today, or maybe CenturyLink is having internet issues today, because I was able to forward the same email that I sent you, Eric, to my Gmail, and it showed up instantaneous. Um, so maybe it's internet issues at your house today. Maybe since you're on Zoom, it's slowing down your computer, um, or it could be a CenturyLink issue. Um, but I, I was nervous when you said you hadn't received the documents from me earlier, so I forwarded them to my to my Gmail account and I got them instantly. It, it's funny because um, I had a, another person that's been contacting me and our emails are going back right back and forth immediately. You can tell it's instantaneous and certain ones now I don't know whether it's because there's an attachment or something like that. Would that be slowing it down? Yes, attachments will slow it down because maybe CenturyLink is uh, scanning that attachment before it delivers it to your inbox. Um, there's, there's, there's multiple reasons of why. If you logged into your county email, though, you would have it. If you were able to log into your county email, you would have it already. It'd be instantaneous. Oh, I will try that. Okay. Any other questions for me today, guys? All right. I was a little disappointed that people thought we weren't transparent in our process. When you've given everybody the information, um, it, it just it's a, it's frustrating. She gives that excuse. She gives that excuse out in everything that we do. She doesn't get it or this or that. That's just her. Yeah. And I I probably didn't update all three of you commissioners as much as I should have, um, but I tried to update you on what we were talking about during. I apologize if, if you didn't feel that we updated you. Well, I feel very much because I was, I was in the process. Uh, I thought I'd try to bring it up with the commission every week of what we were doing. So I did miss that one meeting. That I, didn't, you know. uh, I, I didn't feel like there was anything intentional or anything like that. There's just a lot of information, like you said. How many hours and hours were you dealing with it? And to absorb it in the time frame we have is, and yep. you know, how them final numbers were arrived at, you know, it, it we, had, we didn't have that luxury of, <laughs> if you want to call it luxury, of dealing with it that long, so. Exactly. Uh, in the meetings, to my knowledge, the one day, and that's, that's all, anybody attended. The information was out there. Their egos got hurt because they wasn't asked what they were thought, what they thought, in a nutshell. I didn't hear what you said, Bill. I said the information was out there, but their egos was hurt because they wasn't asked what they thought. Well, you know, the, the governor, that's why we had Ducky on the, uh, I don't want to say anything more. Okay, gentlemen, if you don't need anything else, I'm going to finish uploading all this stuff to the state. Okay. Um, put everything on the county website so people can view the applications and those Excel documents. Yeah, we should do a promotional thing about the five star, five out of five star rating for nursing home too. If that's in your, if that's also in your vein. 
things you're supposed to get done. I will help make it happen. Um, I was contacted by um, Louise Regenstein to see if I want to do the good good news show with her to promote the CARES Act grant. And so I told her I would. Um, uh, we're all social media, local media, everything we can do to get information out to our citizens. Yeah, we're, we'll never have enough money, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Free money is a free money. Yeah. The chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. I still move. 255. Second. Second. Okay. Move by Bill. Seconded by Eric. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 See you aye. next week. Aye. Thank you.